Welcome back to Learn Create Sew. I'm super excited to share today's project with you. Uh, this was a request from a viewer, so thank you very much, Joanne, for your suggestion to make this project. This project is a pair of undies or bloomers to go with your rag doll. So if you've been using my free rag doll pattern, this goes with it. This is a cute little project. They can be a bit of a challenge just because they are so tiny, um, but it is super fun to make and it is a nice finish to your rag doll. You can see that the undies are short and fit right up against the body of the doll. You can see that the bloomers are quite a bit longer and are visible on the outside. You can choose whichever style you prefer. If you'd like the free pattern for this project, go ahead and visit my website, which is linked in the description below. Once you have your pattern, you're going to need some cotton fabric. You can see that I have two layers of fabric here. I'm just using scrap fabric for my project, but if you're purchasing new, about six inches by 16 inches should be big enough to make either the undies or the bloomers for this project. You're also going to want about six inches of quarter inch wide elastic. You're also going to want some narrow elastic cord. Uh, this is beading cord elastic here. It's about 1.5 millimeters wide. You don't want anything that's too thick because that could make it difficult to sew over. I picked this package up for about a dollar at Walmart. Then this is optional. You can add some lace trim to the bottom of your bloomers if you would like. Uh, you want to make sure that it's really lightweight, not too stiff, and you also want to make sure it's pretty narrow. Um, I tried using some wider lace and it didn't work out. It was a little too bulky. The lace I've got here is about three eighths of an inch from the binding to the edge. So about five eighths of an inch in total, but the part that will be visible is about three eighths. I'm gonna begin by placing my fabric pieces right sides together. And for this set, I'm going to be making the undies. So I'm going to place the pattern on top and now I'm going to trace it. Uh, you can just cut around the edge if you like. I don't like to use pins through this thick paper. I find it kind of bends a lot, so I prefer to trace. I'm using an air erase marker, but if you don't have one, you can just use um, a regular pencil or a chalk pencil works. I've also cut out two pieces for the bloomers, which I'm also going to demonstrate. You can see that the bloomers will be just a bit longer. Let's go ahead and transfer some important markings onto our fabric. As we sew the undies and the bloomers, we're going to have to have a casing at the top for elastic, as well as a hem at the bottom. I'm gonna draw myself some guidelines for those folds so that I can make sure they're the correct size. You don't have to do this step. You can just measure the folds with a gauge or a tape measure, but I find I get a nice even fold if I do it this way. So for the hem, I need to fold it up a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna make myself a guideline that is double that. It will show me how far to turn it up so that I end up with a quarter inch fold. So I'm gonna draw a line that is one half inch above the base. So I'm just gonna line up my half inch with the very bottom and draw a line across. This is where I'm gonna fold the edge of the fabric to. Then I'm going to place a guideline for my elastic that I'm going to add. The elastic will be five eighths of an inch from the bottom edge. So this is just one eighth of an inch above your previous line. So go ahead and draw this second line just an eighth of an inch above the other. Next, I'm gonna draw a guideline for the fold on the top casing. 
This is going to be a half an inch fold. So when I draw my guide mark, I'm going to draw it one inch from the top. If you don't want to draw your guidelines, you can use the pattern for the reference. It shows you where the fabric is actually going to be folded, if that's helpful to you. Again, the top edge will be a half an inch fold and the bottom edge will be a quarter inch fold. The process for the bloomers is exactly the same. You'll draw your top fold guide, your bottom fold guide, and the elastic placement line. The only difference would be on either the undies or the bloomers, if you're planning on adding lace, you want to keep an eye on how big the lace casing is. If the binding edge on your lace is wider than one fourth of an inch, you might want to bring up the elastic placement guide just slightly. This will give you just a little bit more space to work with. On the undies, you can't do that because the seam allowance comes so close to where the elastic is already, uh, there's no room to move. So if you're adding lace to the undies, make sure it's tiny. Make sure that the binding area is a quarter of an inch or smaller. If you're adding it to the bloomers, you can just raise this line up a smidge if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and start by pressing the hem. Be careful not to burn your fingers. I like to use a little silicone spatula to help me. So I'm just going to fold up the bottom edge to touch my guideline. That was the first line I drew, so you should be able to see the gap between your fold guide and where the elastic's going to go. So I'm just going to hold this in place here. Then I'm also going to fold it down on the top to meet that guide. Repeat this process for both pieces. If you're not adding lace, your next step is to sew the hem in place. I'm only going to sew the hem edge, not the top casing. This will come later. I'm going to sew this in place with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, or just a smidge bigger. Next, let's go over what to do if you'd like to add lace to the bottom edge. If you're adding lace, you can sew the lace and the hem at the same time. You can do them in two separate steps if you would like, but since these are so tiny, I want to keep them as lightweight as possible and avoid extra bulk. So I'm going to sew it in one step. First, make sure that the hemline is pressed nice and crisp. Then make sure both pieces are facing right side up. We want to place the fabric so that it covers just the binding. And we only want to see the pretty ruffled end of the lace. You can pin this in place to hold it if you like. I like to simply place it as I sew. So I'm going to sew with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance or just a smidge more all the way along the edge, attaching the lace and holding the fold in place. I'm going to stop frequently and align my lace to make sure that it's all lined up just like I want it. But again, you can pin first if that works better for you. Trim your lace to be the same width as your fabric. Next, we're about ready to add the elastic. 
First, this is a good time to check and make sure that you've clipped your threads. These are so tiny and they're gonna have a lot of strings, so if you just leave them hanging, it can get overwhelming and messy by the end of the project. So if you haven't clipped your thread yet, go ahead and take a moment to do that. And then let's grab the elastic. I'm gonna be using black elastic in the video just so that it's easier for you to see. Use the color that best matches your project because you don't really wanna see this in the end. Um, cut a piece of elastic that is about two inches longer than the width of the fabric. I find it's easier to work with if you have a little extra space. And to do this, I'm going to need to use a zigzag on my sewing machine. So I'm gonna put this into the sewing machine like this. So this is my hem edge right here, and this is my elastic placement guide. I'm gonna place my piece of elastic exactly on that line. And I'm going to let the top edge of the elastic extend a bit beyond the side edge here. I like to let it hang off about an inch and that will give you something to hold on to if you need to. The first thing I'm gonna do is tack this elastic in place at one side. So on the edge where I'm starting, I'm gonna do a little straight stitch right here to hold it in place. When I sew the rest of the elastic in place, I'm gonna use a zigzag. I'm gonna start at the end I've tacked down and I'm gonna let one side of the zigzag go on one side of the elastic and the other side will be on the other side of the elastic. So the needle should never actually hit the elastic. We're gonna go over, so it's gonna jump from here to here to here to here to here to here and so on. We're going over the elastic, creating a casing so that we can later pull this to make our gathers. You wanna make sure that your zigzag is wide enough to allow this cord to be in the middle. Um, so I'm gonna be using a stitch width of about 3.5. If you're worried about hitting the elastic, you can go a little bigger at four or 4.5. And I'm gonna use a stitch length of about three. So let's head to the sewing machine and get started. I'm now ready to sew my elastic in place. I'm gonna let it extend about one inch beyond the edge of my fabric. Um, I found that when I sew it, it tends to roll forward a bit. So I'm gonna place it just behind my line that I've drawn. I've set my machine to a stitch length of 1.5. So I'm now ready to sew the elastic in place. And again, I have it just a little behind the line so that as I sew, it rolls forward. And you want to make sure that you trim your threads. Now my elastic's secure. And I'm going to switch to my zigzag stitch. I'm going to make sure that my elastic is right on my guideline. And I'm going to start by hand. I'm starting about where my stitches were, a quarter inch away from the edge of the fabric. And I'm gonna start by hand to go on either side of the elastic. I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna hit it. Looks good. I'm gonna make sure for this step that my machine is set to the mode where the needle stops down. So if your machine has that option, it's helpful if the needle always ends in the fabric. That way, if you have to reposition things, it doesn't get all messed up. So go slow, take your time, make sure you don't hit the elastic, because if you do, you have to start over 
and I found it's helpful to use this little piece of elastic that's in the back to help guide your fabric through. usually takes a little bit of maneuvering to get it started, but once it's going, it's usually pretty smooth. Notice how I'm guiding it from the front and the back, and I'm keeping the elastic cord directly in the center. And it's okay if you have to start and stop a lot. So if you notice it's moving off the line, if you notice it's not in the center, go ahead and stop and reposition it. Okay, back stitch about a quarter inch away from the edge. Now on this side, you do not want to stitch on the cord. This edge is going to allow us to pull the elastic through the casing. And repeat the process for the other side. We finished the zigzag over the elastic and now I'm gonna trim my threads. Okay, now you should have one end of the elastic that has been stitched in place and one end that hasn't. So this here is my end that's been sewn in place and this one's free. I'm gonna slide the elastic through that casing. I'm gonna hold onto the edge that's free and move the fabric down. I'm going to scrunch it until the elastic that's touching the fabric is only two and a half inches long. So this is pretty tiny. Um, if you've made the rag doll already, you can see that it has super skinny legs. So these little undies that are going to go around the edge are going to be real tiny. I'm at three inches, almost there. Okay, and there we go. You can see that it's now two and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna stitch right on this end, a quarter inch away from the edge. I'm gonna stitch right here to hold this elastic in place. This was the free side of my elastic. So you can see it's the one that I've been sliding. And I'm gonna stitch right here to hold that elastic in place. You don't have to do this. You can just move on to the next step. So if you make a lot of them, uh, this is something you could skip later on. But just so that when I'm working with it, I don't have to worry about that moving. I'm gonna do a little back stitch over here to hold that end in place. This can be a little tricky because your fabric does want to crinkle. So if you have a stiletto or a purple thing to help you guide your fabric and protect your fingers, that's helpful. Once the elastic's secure, go ahead and trim off your threads and the elastic to be the same size as your fabric. And repeat and make sure all your threads are trimmed. You'd insert the elastic for the bloomers in exactly the same way. So you can see I've repeated the process here for the bloomers. 
and it is helpful if you use coordinating thread for this process, so something that matches your fabric so that you don't see it. I used white on the outside here so you can still see it a bit. Um, blue probably would have been a better choice if I really didn't want to see that stitching at all. Now that the elastic's been attached, let's create the legs. And this process is the same for both styles. Fold the leg in half so that you can see the elastic. So you're going to have right sides touching. Line up the hemline, matching those corners. And we're going to sew along this edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. You do want to make sure that all of your gathers and pleats are out of the way. You want to make sure that this section is completely flat and we're just going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance using a straight stitch to finish off that leg piece. You do the exact same thing for the bloomers. Fold it in half with the elastic visible. Line up that bottom hem edge. Move the gathers out of the way. And we're going to sew down this edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. So the curved section, we're not to yet. The waistband, we're not to yet. Since this is so tiny, I will probably have to start and stop a lot to keep it aligned. I have my machine set to a regular straight stitch with stitch length 2.5. I'm starting a little bit away from the edge because I don't want to get it stuck in the needle plate. So I'm just going to back stitch a few stitches. I am stitching on the lace as well as the fabric. And the next step is optional, but something that you can do to help the leg seam allowances lay flatter is you can open up the leg and push the seam to one side and then top stitch it. But you can see my seam allowance is going this way. And so I'm going to lay this as flat as I can get it and I'm going to stitch just to the left hand side of my seam. So here is my seam. I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from that so that I can sew the seam allowance in place. I like to do this with the fabric wrong side out and then you can kind of sew in the tube. You kind of have to stretch it a bit but make sure that the section where you're going to be sewing is flat. And again, this step is optional. And that just helps that seam allowance to lay really flat. So I've got the legs ready. I top stitched the leg on the undies. I did not on the bloomers uh, because this section is just a little bit larger and it's harder to do. Um, and it's not really required. It's just something if you uh, prefer the look with it that way, but I'm just going to finger press it instead. 
The next thing we're going to do is work on the waistband and I'm going to show you two different methods to do the waistband. In one, the elastic is completely hidden and you won't see it at all. In the other way, you will see bits of the elastic in the seam allowance. Uh, the second method is a little bit easier. Um, and since it's a doll, it's not like you have to worry about it being comfortable. Um, the first way is a little bit more of a challenge, but it does look really nice in the end. So I'm gonna show you both methods and you can decide which one will work best for you. They both start the same way. This dot right here on your pattern piece indicates a stopping point. We're gonna sew the legs together on just one side and just part of the way. Then we're gonna work on the waistband because it's a lot easier to construct that when it's flat. So we need to transfer this dot to our fabric. Uh, you could have also done this before you started sewing. I forgot to mention it at the beginning, but when you draw all of your fold lines, that is a good time to do it. So I just like to take a pin and poke a hole right there. I'm gonna grab one of my leg pieces here and since I've already sewn it, I'm gonna turn it so that it's wrong side out. And on one of the edges, I'm gonna draw my dot. So I'm just gonna line up that top waistline. I'm gonna line up that curve and draw the dot. So right here is going to be a stopping point when I sew. Put them together, I'm going to turn each of the legs right side out. This is the piece that has my mark. I'm going to attach that to the other one. So along the top edge, the waistband, I'm going to match these up, matching edges and folds. and I'm going to line up that U just until my mark. And that mark is where I'm gonna stop sewing. So I'm gonna move all the rest of the fabric out of the way and I'm gonna sew just this middle section with a quarter inch seam allowance stopping and back stitching right here. So you can kind of see that they're already starting to look a little bit like shorts or bloomers. This step is the same for both methods. As you stitch this section, take care to make sure all the other layers are out of the way. The two legs are now connected. When you make an elastic casing, you want to make sure that any seams are laying flat. One thing that happens when you try to insert elastic is as you try to slide it through the channel, the elastic will get caught in the seam allowance and two things can happen. One, either you won't be able to push it through because it will be stuck or two, it can fold this edge over, making it kind of lumpy and bulky. So to avoid that, what you can do, and this is optional, is baste this flat before you make your casing. So all you do is a row of stitches on one side and the other. These are meant to be temporary so that you can take them out later so you won't see them on your final project. You don't need to back stitch or anything. It's just to lay this flat so that you don't have to worry about it when you're putting your elastic in. Now that, that is an optional step. If you're not worried about your elastic getting stuck, you don't have to do that. But if you'd like to make sure it stays nice and secure, you can do a row of stitching here and here and then take it out at the end of the project. I'm just gonna finger press mine flat today. 
but I have done basting it in place quite a bit and it is helpful. I'm going to start by showing you how to do the casing that has the exposed elastic on the sides. To do this method, when you have the two legs connected, fold the casing over at your fold line. So we've already pressed it, so it should fold really easy. And then I'm going to head to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew this flat with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to start at one end, sew all the way down to the other end, making a nice flat casing for my elastic. So let's do that. Trim your threads. Next, you're going to need your quarter inch wide elastic and a safety pin. It does need to be a pretty tiny safety pin to fit in the casing. Poke the safety pin through the end of the elastic. And slide it on through. Be careful at the center seam. I didn't baste mine in place, so I had to wiggle it a bit to get it to fit. Okay, be careful as you get to the end. When you notice that your elastic is getting towards the edge of the fabric, stop, and we're going to head to the sewing machine. When the elastic is exactly at the edge, so that the fabric and the elastic line up, we're going to sew it in place. I'm going to sew just with an eighth of an inch seam allowance along this edge right here so that my elastic doesn't slide out. Then I'm going to continue pulling the elastic through to the other side. I'm going to remove the safety pin and then when the other side aligns exactly with this edge, I'm going to stitch again and sew it in place so that my elastic is connected at both ends. Our waistband's done, and now we have to finish putting the two legs together. This can be a little tricky, so one way to do it is to take one leg and put it inside the other. So I'm going to flip this leg over that one. So I'm basically going to turn this one inside out so that this one's on the inside. So let me show you. And you can see how the edges are kind of nested together. You can see our U shape. You can see where we stopped sewing previously here. And we have to continue sewing all the way up to this end. And pin that in place. I'm going to align the center seam and I'm going to push one seam one way and one seam the other. And I'm going to finish sewing that U. So I'm going to start here and go to the end or you can start here and stop there. It's your choice. For the other waistband method, you're going to do that step now. On this piece, we haven't done the waistband yet, but we're going to finish the U first. So just as before, flip one leg inside the other. You can see where we stopped sewing. align those center seams up 
align the top edge of the waistband. And we're going to finish sewing the U. Now this step can be a little tricky. Take your time, go slow. Don't be afraid to stop if you need to and readjust. On the undies, since they are so, so tiny, uh, be careful to make sure you're only sewing through two layers here and take the time to make sure all of those ruffles are out of your way. If you did the method with the exposed elastic, your waistband's now done. If you would like this section to lay flatter, you can simply finger press this seam open and do a row of stitches on each side to help the elastic lay flat. I'm not gonna do that because when you do top stitch it, you will see the stitches on the front. Um, I'm just gonna finger press it and I don't plan to remove these from the doll, so um, it will be good for my purpose. But if you plan to take it on and off a lot, if you're worried about it laying flat, you can do two rows of top stitching to help that lay nice and flat. If you're doing the method with the hidden elastic waistband, now that you've sewn the two legs together, fold over, make sure both of the seams are open, and again, if you'd like to base them flat, you can do so. We're now going to stitch this in place with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. However, when I'm stitching around, I'm gonna leave a little open section, probably about 3 fourths of an inch wide, where I can insert my elastic waistband. So I'm gonna start here, sew all the way around, and stop here, leaving a little gap. And I'm gonna use a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now we're going to place the elastic inside the casing. Just as before, use that safety pin on the end of the elastic, insert it into the opening, and slide through. As you insert the elastic, take time to make sure that it doesn't get twisted. You do want this elastic to lay nice and flat. So doing that basting really does help save some headaches. So take a few seconds to do that if you're worried about getting your elastic in. It's kind of one of those things where you either spend the time at the beginning or you spend the time at the end. And it is a good method that always works. So, Okay, so I've got my elastic through, and be careful as you slide your elastic, you don't want to lose this end. I'm checking to make sure it's not twisted. I'm gonna pull this end through. Remove my safety pin. I now have the two ends of my elastic, and I want to overlap them. So 
I want them to overlap about three eighths of an inch. Like so. You will have to pull it out of the casing just a bit so you can get to the machine to sew this. You can either sew this by hand or on the machine, but you need to sew these two little ends together so you can see here that the ends of the elastic are overlapping. I need to sew those two ends together. You can either use a zigzag or a straight stitch. I'm going to do two rows of straight stitches and you do want to make sure your fabric's out of the way. Now that the elastic's in a loop, I'm going to pull on that waistband so that the elastic slides right inside and then I'm going to continue sewing that opening closed. So I'm going to flip this right side out to do that. And I'm just going to go right at the section where I was sewing before, right at my opening. I'm going to start just a little before, starting directly on my stitches, sew across and directly on my stitches. You may have to pull it just a little bit so that it's flat when you're sewing. Next, trim your threads. And we're done. You now have a nice pair of undies or bloomers for your ragdoll.